Hey y'all, it's Stacy with southernbite.com. We're back in the kitchen today making my secret ingredient meatloaf. Now, if you're a meatloaf fan, you're gonna wanna try this recipe. It's got all the classic flavor that you expect for meatloaf, but we punch it up a notch. To start, I've got half a cup of plain breadcrumbs here and our secret ingredient, one cup of a zesty Bloody Mary mix. Now, this doesn't have any alcohol in it. This is just jazzed up tomato juice, right? So this is just what you would use to make a Bloody Mary. And because there's so much flavor in this, it makes it the perfect thing to add to meatloaf. Going to stir this together and allow the breadcrumbs to absorb that Bloody Mary mix. That's going to help keep our meatloaf moist and help keep it all together. All right, I've got two pounds of ground chuck here. Now we opt for a ground chuck because this is gonna cook for about an hour. When we pick ground beef, we want ground beef that's got a little fat in it so that all the moisture doesn't just leach out when it's baking, okay? In here, we're going to add one onion that's been minced, a green pepper that's been minced. Now, these are really fine and it's gonna cook for about an hour, so you probably won't have this problem, but if you're super concerned about the crunch that you sometimes find with vegetables in meatloaf, you can pop these in a skillet with a little butter, cook them till they're tender, and then add them to the meatloaf to make sure that that's not a problem. I've got an egg here, a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of garlic powder, half a teaspoon of black pepper, Pepper. And then we're going to add our breadcrumbs right here to the mix. And we're going to get dirty. We're going to get our hands dirty here because we've got to mix this together, right? The thing about this is there's really not a great way to do this without using your hands. Keep in mind, though, the more that we work this mixture, the greater risk we run in terms of overworking it, which will give us a tough, dense meatloaf. And we certainly don't want that. Now, I've got our oven preheated to about 350 degrees, and we're not gonna put this in a loaf pan. I've got a nine by 13 inch baking dish here that we're going to use. We're gonna form this into a loaf right in the middle of this pan. I've already sprayed it with a little nonstick cooking spray. We're just gonna form this right in the middle of this pan. Now, what this does is this allows all of the fat to run away from the meatloaf. In a loaf pan, it all gets trapped right in the pan with it. So sometimes we end up with a greasy meatloaf. This, doing it this way, removes that and allows all that fat to drain away. Let me wash these hands quickly. Then we're gonna make our topping. For our topping, we're gonna use some more of that Bloody Mary mix. I've got about a half a cup of ketchup here and about a tablespoon of Bloody Mary mix. Going to whisk these together and spread it right over the top. And that's it. We've made meatloaf. This is going to bake for 50 to 60 minutes in our preheated oven until it's cooked completely through. Now, the most surefire way to make sure that happens is to use a meat thermometer. We're going to want to cook it to an internal temperature of 160 degrees. Dinner's ready. Y'all, you can find this recipe and hundreds more on my website at southernbite.com. Y'all enjoy. Now, Mary, I don't do a lot of cooking, but I have made a meatloaf, but I never thought of putting Bloody Mary mix in it. You know, it does make perfect sense though, because it's basically tomato juice with some seasoning to give it a little kick. But as Stacy pointed out, there is no alcohol. That's an important detail. Now, you know what the best part of a meatloaf is? What's that? When you have a slice or two left over the next day, put it between two pieces of white bread, maybe warm it up just a little bit, a little ketchup cool. on top of it. Meatloaf sandwich. Kevin, you're gonna have to calm down. We gotta focus and wrap up the show now. Thanks for being with us, everybody. When you come back next week, we'll tell you the interesting story of how the sweet potato became Alabama's official state vegetable earlier this year. And you'll see how horses are helping people with various disabilities live fuller lives. Thanks for being with us today. I'm Kevin Worthington. And I'm Mary Wilson. We'll see you next week. Simply Southern is produced by the Alabama Farmers Federation and made possible with the support of Alabama Farmers Cooperative and these sponsors.